who were the influencers, the people who have authority in your industry, in your market, who already serve your ideal clients and have established a community and are open to partnering and collaborating. You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 276. And today I'm going to share a secret to extracting the gold from your community network. You ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get Amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders, your host, Melanie Benson. Today, I'm celebrating. Uh, I've had some amazing things dropping in my lap, all kinds of opportunities from all kinds of relationships that I've been nurturing for years. And I just wanted to take a minute to unpack how this happens because one of the common things that I hear in uh, with the members of Amplifier Circle and my free Facebook group, Amplifier Authority, when I talk about the strategies to work through my seven step framework of getting on hot stages that lead to great ideal leads coming in that you can transform to high ticket clients. The number one obstacle that seems to be in the way is, Melanie, where do I find these relationships? Where do I find these opportunities? How do I get these people to choose me? Look, there's no secret formula, but there are people who are really good at developing networks and cultivating the riches in these networks. And then there are people who try to do it all themselves or they are not being intentional enough about the people who can really move the needle for you. And so I'm going to share with you how I help to tap, how I am tapping into my network, how I'm cultivating relationships, how I'm able to transform a lot of those relationships into great opportunities to share my message, to make a big difference in the world, and to attract more clients and more opportunities. So it's a, it's a very powerful strategy and you do have to be intentional about it. And it starts with understanding what you do with those opportunities. And that's what you will get in my seven step plan to get on hot stages, get ideal leads and get five figure clients. If you don't have that yet, I would highly recommend head over to amplifywithmelanie.com and get the report. In that report, I unpack the entire strategy. And if you really want help, I highly suggest that you book a Amplify audit with me once you've got the plan and let's look at how you can translate this to you and what is really in the way. So if you're really eager to get this solved and you don't wanna go through the the free plan, you can jump right to my audit at amplifyaudit.com. Okay, so you can get the plan at Amplify with Melanie. You could get the audit at amplifyaudit.com. Okay, so. Let me get into this really important strategy and let me first kind of set the context for what your community network, meaning the people that are in your community and the network that you establish, the circle of influence you develop around you. I learned a very valuable lesson when I started my business in 2000. It took me a couple years to really catch on to what was working, but I realized very quickly that the door to opportunity would swing open faster when you were surrounded by people and could tap into people who had already developed the know, like, and trust and had established rapport with an audience and you could solve a problem that they don't solve for that audience. And the key to opening the door was your relationship with them. I started to notice that all of the people who got invited to stages and who got it now, these days, we didn't have a podcast 20 years ago, but uh, today they get invited to the hot podcast that uh, get the opportunities to partner. It, it starts with who do you know? Who is in your network? To recognize that the value 
of your network will dictate the value of the opportunities. And that's why people invest big money to be in masterminds, to uh, invest in coaching programs with their peers, to uh, go to events, right? Like they're half the time they're investing in the people who will be in those rooms and in those, on those calls and in those Facebook groups and in those communities with you is that's, you're cultivating the opportunities just as much as what you learn from the mentor who hosts them. Let me first talk about what's possible when you are really intentional and taking action regularly to cultivate relationships. Luckily, I, I've been very uh, good at this since the beginning. My, like, I'd have to say my first million in revenue came from three people who we had a very strong collaborative relationship and we invited each other to speak at each other's events and I solved problems they didn't and vice versa. Uh, along the way, those people shifted over time because we all evolved, we changed, our, our offerings changed. And today, what I find is that there are people who, when they respect you, when they like your message, when they like working with you, and they find that you add massive value, they will come back to you over and over and over again and put you on the stages. So one of the opportunities that recently emerged I have a long time relationship with a woman named Jennifer Hensel. She's followed my work for years. We recently connected through the podcasting community and she was very gracious and very generous right out of the gate, inviting me on her podcast, inviting me to be one of the influencers in her women in podcasting community. I, she would just give and give and give and give. And I was very moved and touched by that. And what I recognize is that um, she was being intentional about cultivating relationships. And so about three months ago, she invited me to be a part of PodFest. And she's going to be hosting the Women in Podcasting track. So if you're thinking of going to PodFest, make sure that you come to the Women in Podcasting track on day one. I was very moved. She's like, look, I think it'd be really awesome if you were one of our influential women in podcasting in the panels and uh, speaking in our track. And so, of course, I said, yes. I was like, okay, I wasn't planning on going. So wasn't quite ready to travel yet, but I'm in, like I'm all in. And that was because of the relationship. So what tends to happen is people have their kind of like their circle of influencers that they like to tap into when they're putting an event together, when they're taking the lead on something, when, when they're going to um, have a bunch of people speak at a summit, or they want to line up some great guests for a podcast or a show, or someone they know is looking for something. And it's your job to be visible in that network, in that community, and give value for people to start seeing you. So if you feel invisible, which I know many people do, it's because you haven't really cultivated this network properly. So here's some ways that you could do that. First of all, so when I'm guiding clients to develop a community network to extract the gold from, what we're first looking at is who should be in this network. So there's two schools of thought. There's develop kind of like a strong inner circle and then there's the theory of cultivate as many people as you can. The second one takes a little bit more organization, obviously, but be intentional. So what I like to do is think about who are the influencers, the uh, people who have authority in your industry, in your market, who already serve your ideal clients and have established a community and would and are open to partnering and collaborating. So when you're intentional, you're not just saying yes to anybody, you're saying yes to the people who can really open doors and you can open doors for them and you're actually going to attract the right people. I, I learned some expensive lessons about this over the years. And just because somebody has a rich, very valuable, big community doesn't mean they're a great community for you. And I have a great friend who I love and adore. She's a fantastic coach. She attracts a lot of coaches, but I found that the way she's cultivated her community over the years, she didn't really have my ideal clients in her community. She had a lot of people who were employees and people who were um, professionals working inside someone else's company. And those are not really my ideal clients. So she didn't really make a great uh, partner, but 
I found that people who, um, like I have a, a client who serves women who are experts in their industry. And we realized, oh, yes, we actually can be good collaboration partners now that our client relationship has shifted over the years. And w you could promote my stuff and, you know, we could, I could promote her stuff and we would have great synergy. So being intentional means you really understand who is serving your ideal audience. That doesn't mean other people can't provide opportunities and there can't be great collaboration. They won't make a great guest for your show. It just means when you really want to extract the gold from your network, you don't necessarily need to dig deeper with people who don't serve your ideal audience because they're not going to make great clients anyway. And I think really the key here is uncovering how do they like to promote and collaborate with preferred partners who hopefully you will become. So um, for instance, my friend Jennifer, who I mentioned earlier, she she promotes all kinds of people who are in the podcasting field. And she'll regularly say, even if it feels like a competitive offer, she'll be like, hey, I don't have a problem promoting that to my audience. And so she doesn't see competition. She sees collaborative effort. And she sees some people are going to like her stuff. Some people are going to like my stuff. So um, take some time to explore how does somebody like to promote and collaborate with others? One of the best ways to do this, so there's three really great ways to do this. One is to be in groups where conversation is going to happen, where you're going to get into some kind of pods or small breakout groups, or you have some ongoing chatter inside uh, uh, Facebook groups or something like that, where you can talk about what you're looking for and who makes a great partner. The second way, and I think this is really important, especially if you're going to move the needle and really cultivate a strong relationship is find find some time to book a call and have a coffee chat or get to know you call and find out what it is that they're looking for and what it is they want in exchange. I, I know it's a lot more work, but if you suspect somebody's going to make a great partner, this is an important step to really developing strength in the relationship and finding out is it going to work or not. Uh, last year, I dedicated about six weeks to reaching out to people who'd kind of been on the fringe or I was interested in, I'd been seeing their stuff and I was reaching out and I was asking them like, hey, you want to get to know each other better and see if there's some synergy. And I think I probably had about 20 to 25 calls. And some of them, there really wasn't a fit. A few of them, it wasn't a fit right now. I had a promotion going on that wasn't really the best timing for them. And some of those people, it didn't work then, but they're reaching out now and booking me to speak at their events that they're having. Great way to seed future opportunity is to get on their radar, start the conversations, talk about what you're both doing, find out what feels like a fit, what are you looking for, and then nurture it. And that's where this requires some organization. <laughs> I am a huge fan of uh, organizing the connections that you're making and keeping some kind of a database or uh, some kind of what's called a CRM, a client relationship manager, a way to keep track of conversations and who's doing what and who are the relationships that you're going to nurture and check in with them once in a while. For me, Facebook is a great way to do that because I'll see what they've got going on. I'll give them some love on their social posts. I'll send them a little Facebook message and say, that's really hot. Let me know if I can support you in any way. Or, hey, it's been a while since we chatted. You want to jump on a call and check in with each other. Okay, so those are the ways that I find developing and connecting and collaborating with people works. Now, there are other people who do it a little bit more, um, like a little more removed. I'm very relationship forward and some people are more um, like event forward. They lead with there is an event that I'd like for you to support. And what I find is, is if you're only reaching out to people when you want them to promote something, it's not going to resonate with everybody. Some people will be okay with it. And some people are like, that's just the relationship we have. But for relationship forward people, that's not really your best way to do it. And if I'm going in intentionally because I've got an event coming or I've got something I'm interested in seeing people want to promote, 
I go in very unattached. It's like, hey, here's what's up. Is it a fit? Does it work for you? Great. No. Well, let's circle back in a few months and see if it, if it might help. And then it's all about having a way to circle back. So we use a tool. We've recently changed this. I used to use Google Sheets and we would just keep track of everything. Google Sheets. And you could also use Airtable. But what I am currently loving is a tool called Streak. Uh, I'll probably have to do a whole episode on how we use Streak someday. <laughs> it's really fascinating. Uh, it's a great resource, but it's a Google Chrome plugin that allows me to take an email I receive and plug it into a pipeline, which is, okay, this is a speaking opportunity. This is a podcast interview. This is a uh, somebody pitching me to support them on something. So we plug it in and then we have workflow that we, you know, kind of nurture the relationship. And so what I do is when I've got somebody who there's definitely an affinity, we, we really like each other. We like the idea of supporting each other. We are going to, I put them into the uh, streak uh, business development. That's what I call it. And I will go back once a week and check in. Is there somebody I'm due to follow up with this week and connect with? So that's what's working for me right now. But again, you've got to use something that works for you. I say, keep it simple. Use Airtable or Google Sheet. Or if you're really old school, you could have a little Rolodex card or something and flip through your Rolodex card, whatever works for you. That's super old school, but you get my point. Now, a couple of things that I find really helpful around all this is be willing to take the lead. If you've got somebody who you really feel there's some value there and, and you want to cultivate the relationship, take the lead, support them, be on their radar, um, reach out first and say, Hey, I really like what you're up to. You want to schedule a chat or, uh, what do you, you know, you can do it over email if they're too busy but take the lead. Don't be afraid to start the process. It won't work with everybody. There's people who take the lead with me and I'm always super honored, but I, I don't have the bandwidth for all of it. So sometimes I'm like, Hey, thanks so much for reaching out. It's not a fit right now, but Hey, here's somebody who might be a better fit. Um, second, give first. Sometimes you will have the ask and you don't have time to cultivate long-term relationships. This is where the people you have an ongoing relationship with will be pure gold for you. But if you give first by nature and you're like, hey, what can I do to support you? Or you're giving people some social media love. You're uh, seeing their emails come through and you see an opportunity and then you post about it and share for them. They see it. They notice it. And by the way, this is where having your own podcast is pure gold because most busy influencers, people who you're going to covet an opportunity to cultivate a relationship with, they are massively moved if you invite them to your show first. If you can give them that exposure and that visibility and then cultivate a conversation and say, well, what do you got going on? What are you looking for? Are you open to doing a podcast swap? I've done that where I've been wanting to get on somebody's podcast, but they pitched me first and I'll say, hey, are you open to doing a podcast swap? It's one of my little secrets to, to the podcast guesting strategy. But having your own show gives you authority and an asset to give value first. Okay. And if you do not have your own show, I will hook up in the show notes. My show, my uh, authority brand podcast toolkit is a very simple, inexpensive tool to help you get your podcast or your show off the ground quickly. I highly recommend you find a way to do that. It will be a needle mover for you in building relationships. Uh, and last, be organized. So every time I talk about collaboration, I bring this up and that's because a lot of people say they're going to do stuff and they never do. And it really burns the bridges. And you know, we've all been there. We got busy. We forgot something came up. Uh, but if you're organized, and you come across really professionally and you are intentional about, hey, I just want to check in, see how things are going, you will find that your network brings you gold faster. So last tip, I am a fan of keeping things simple. So I tend to have about 50 people on my radar at any given time. 
and 10 of them are in my focus. So think about like, imagine with me for a minute, a bullseye. If the bigger bullseye, uh, you know, the board has 50 people on it and 50 opportunities, the bullseye and the ring around it are 10. 10 people that I'm being intentional to move the needle with, to really cultivate and strengthen my relationship with. And uh, again, going back to the factors, like I know they serve my ideal clients. I know there's synergy here. I know they're interested and open to promoting, collaborating. And so I'm nurturing the relationship and exploring where could that bring gold for both of us? Like what, where are the opportunities and what is it that I would benefit from and what would they benefit from? And once I've kind of exasperated or kind of played out those 10 people and it's, we've either moved it into uh, some opportunity or they're not responsive over a long period of time where it's not mutual and I'm getting the picture, yeah, this, this isn't the person that, that really wants an ongoing relationship, I'll back burner them. And if something comes out, great. But if I've worked that process long enough and something's not coming out of it, I just, I let it expire. And, and so then I put a new 10 people into the radar. And that's what keeps this continuing to work. I really encourage you to look at who's in your network and how could you intentionally grow your network, cultivate your ne- network and be intentional about extracting the gold from your community network. It's not about doing this yourself. And it's not about having to do really expensive joint ventures either. That's not really what this is about. This is about how can I really collaborate and and co-create opportunities for everybody, an opportunity for you to get more business, more clients, more speaking, an opportunity for them to do the same and maybe even get a problem solved and an opportunity for the people we serve to tap into new knowledge and resources and support they wouldn't get otherwise. Okay, when we do this well, it's a win-win-win for everybody. And if you're on the fence and wondering, is it really worth the time, money, and energy, I'll just say this. There was a time about 15 years ago where um, I was starting to notice that the partners I'd been working with, the things were slowing down, uh, the, the opportunities weren't popping the way they had for a while, and I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to cultivate some new relationships. And I reached out to some people who I knew, but we'd never actively promoted and partnered before. And one of the women, I knew there was great opportunity there, but we just, we'd never, we'd never moved it forward. We'd never done anything with it because we're both very busy in our lives. And I took it from somebody on the periphery, on the outside of the bullseye into the center. And it took about four to five weeks and between the time I approached her and the time she met with me and we had a really great conversation and she said, uh, you know, I didn't realize the magic you were bringing into your community. And now I really understand what you're doing. I absolutely want to promote your program. And I think it was my money mindset program at the time. That partnership, when she promoted, I, I probably made a good thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in sales immediately. But what was really interesting, and this is why this is so valuable, and I want you to really deep, deeply connect with this. There are some people who enrolled through her in that first program who are continuing to work with me today. And not only have I continued to serve those clients and help improve their business and create things they never dreamed of, but I have a, a, had had recurring revenue from some of them that has gone way past $150,000, $200,000 in revenue. Your network is your gold mine. And there are so much opportunity in it if you know how to really cultivate it and grow it and make it work for you. Okay, so if you do not know how to do this, I highly recommend you reach out to me, book that Amplify audit. Let's figure out how to help you activate that kind of gold mine for your business. And if you know about it and you just haven't been intentional, I'd love to hear you're going to take the next step and break into your network and really cultivate it. Come on into my Amplify Your Authority Facebook group and tell me about it. Or just give me a little shout out here on social and tell me how you're going to use this Amplify tip.
Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com, and I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going, and I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name, and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. 